So You Can Play That Game is proudly sponsored by NiceGameShop.com, the place to go for rare and unusual Asian games. Hi, I'm Michael. Take a seat and I'll teach you how to stake claim on territories of land in order to build up your kingdom to be the most prosperous of all and potentially even gain the favour of the Queen in Queen Domino by Blue Orange Games. Setting up the game, you'll shuffle all the tiles and sit them in the box as so, so that the numbers all face in the same direction. You'll also lay out the buildings board and shuffle all the buildings and put them in a stack. Then lay out six of the buildings in the market. You'll place the dragon in his cave here, the queen just beside the board, along with placing piles of knights, towers and money. Each player will then pick a colour and take the corresponding starting tile, castle and kings. If you're playing two player, they'll take both the kings. If you're playing three or four player, then they only take one king. They'll also each take a knight and seven money. Then take the first four tiles that are randomly at the front of the tiles in the box and you'll sort these so that the lowest number is on top in a line like so and the highest number is at the bottom. You'll then flip these over and take one of each player's kings, no matter the number of players, shake them up and randomly pick one. That player will then pick a tile to put their king on. So this one will go there say. Now if it's a three or four player game, you'll just keep randomly picking until you have everyone having placed their king. If you're doing a two player game, it would now be the other player's turn to pick a tile. So this player is going to go for this one here, and then the purple player would again pick a tile, and then the white player. And the final thing you do is take another four tiles randomly from the front of the pile, and sort them into number order next to those that you already have out and flip them. At this point you're now ready to begin the game. The aim of the game is to have the most points in your kingdom at the end and the game will end once all the tiles have been taken out of the box and either added to people's kingdoms or discarded. You might have to discard a tile if there's nowhere you're able to place it. For example, if this was the last tile that this player drafted, there's not actually anywhere they could put it. However, if you can place a tile, you always must. So if, say, this was over here, they would have to place this tile here. When the game ends, you'll then total up your score using the scoring sheet provided. So, money is three coins equals one point. So here we have four coins, that would be one point. You then gain points for crowns in your wheat fields. So although this wheat field is reasonably large, with five different tiles in this territory, because there are no crowns in it, it would score no points. However, if this player had the queen, and this was their largest territory, which it is, five is their largest, they could place the queen in that territory to also count as a crown. But only the player who has the queen, because they have the most towers, will be able to do this. You'd then also do the same for forests. So forests here, we actually have quite a lot of crowns. We've got one, two, three, four, five tiles, and they each have one crowns on. So to work out the score for that, you do the number of crowns times the number of spaces, so 25. We then do the same for water, for our meadows, for wastelands, and for mines. So the interesting thing here is that this meadow would score nothing because it has no crowns in, and that these mines are not connected. 
So you don't times all of them. So here we have four crowns and two spaces of mines. So that would be eight points. And then we've got two on its own. So that's just two points. You then also do the same for your cities. Now, you won't necessarily have any crowns in your cities unless you've bought a building, which are one of these small tiles, that has a crown on it. You'll then score other types of buildings that you might be getting points for. For example, you have these ones here with the crosses. They give you two points for each separate area of that terrain type. So here we have two points for cities. Here we're getting two points for wheat fields. So although this is made up of five spaces, it's one territory, so it's only worth two points. However, our cities, we've got one, two, three, four different territories, getting us eight points. You then might also have buildings that will give you additional points for either your towers or your knights. Here we're getting one point per tower, so that'd be an additional point for this tower here. This tile, though it has knights on, actually increases your taxes when you do the taxes action, which I'll come to shortly in the description. And finally, you'll have just basic points on some of the buildings, such as these, where we're getting five and two points. You'll then total up your score, and whoever has the most has won the game. The game is broken down into rounds consisting of turns, and each turn revolves around resolving a king. And once each king has been resolved, that's then the end of the round. To resolve a king, the first thing you'll do is add the tile to your kingdom. So you can place the tile anywhere adjacent to the castle, or if you already have all your spaces adjacent to the castle, the rules for placing a tile require you to have a terrain type matching. So you wouldn't be able to place like this because you don't have any matching terrain types. But if we rotated it, like that would be fine. Once you've placed a tile in your kingdom, you're no longer going to be able to move it. The next step is optional, and you can place these knights into the territories on the tile you just played, if you have knights to place. You can either place two if you have two, or if you only have one, obviously you would only be able to place one. When you place a knight, you will collect taxes, based on the number of squares in that territory. And a territory is made up of the same terrain type connected. So at the moment, this would only get me one coin. If I had this here, however, that'd be one, two, three, three coins. As I say, the terrain types do have to be connected. So if we had this tile here, although we have two of these meadows, they're not connected, so we'd still only gain one coin. Next, you may buy a single building and the price is clearly denoted under the individual buildings. It's important to note that once a building is bought, the market is not going to refresh immediately. It will do that at the end of the round. Also, if you have the queen currently visiting your kingdom, you will have a one coin discount on any buildings you're buying. The final thing to be aware of is that you can only buy a building if you have an in-construction town tile in your kingdom ready to place the building on. So if I bought this one for zero coins, that would then be placed on one of the buildings. It's important to note that these city spaces here that you're building onto don't have to have been played this turn. It could have been done at a previous point. You are only able to build one building though, even if you have multiple free spaces. Also, once you've built a building, you can't then get rid of it to place a different building in its place. You would have to have a different space to build the building you want in. Having built any buildings that you want, you're then able to do the next step, which is bribe the dragon. The dragon can only be bribed if he is still over here in his little cave. When you bribe the dragon, you pay a coin to the bank, 
and then you place the dragon on one of the buildings in the supply here. He then destroys that building, meaning no one can buy it. It'll also mean that the row will move down more at the end of the round. Once one person has done this, because the dragon is no longer in his cave, no one else can do that this round. At the end of the round, the dragon will return to his cave. The final step in resolving your king is mandatory, and that's to pick a new tile from the new row in order to place your king on it. So let's say we will go for this one just here. That would now be the end of our turn, and the next player, according to the order of the tiles, would take their turn. So that would be this purple player resolving this tile, then we would resolve this one again, and then this one, and then that would be the end of the round. We then take four more tiles from the box and we lay them out in number order, again going from lowest to our highest, and we'll flip these over. And at this point, all of these tiles should have kings on. So we'll say that they ended up like this. And we'll flip these tiles, ready to start the new round, so you can see, as you're placing these, what ones you might want to claim to have for the next round. If you're playing with free players, you'll actually find that one of the tiles was never claimed in the previous round, and this tile is simply discarded from the game. The other thing you need to do at the end of the round is discard any buildings destroyed by the dragon and return the dragon to his cave, then slide any buildings down to fill in empty spaces that there might be. If there are no empty spaces, the building simply won't move, and you then take from the top of the stack to fill in the new empty spaces. And that's then ready to start the next round and you'll keep playing rounds like this until all the tiles have been used. At that point you'll then score up each player's kingdoms to work out whose kingdom is the most prosperous and whoever's is wins the game. And that is how you play Queen Domino by Blue Orange Games. I do hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please do give it a like, a share, a comment, and do also check out the rest of the videos on the channel, as well as subscribing to the channel. And as always, thanks for watching, and bye for now.